We've been looking at roses recently. This is a lovely pink one. Sometimes you might start with a drawing. Just go slowly if you do, and you can always dab it with a rubber to get softer, cut, softer pencil marks. Try out your colours. See what they're like when they're let down. Most of the time with roses, you don't need loads of colours. You might need some slightly purpley colours for the shadows. Some yellows, some pinks, some, well, whatever colour they are. This rose here is a really loose rose. I wet the paper first and I did paint some of the petals, so I just used a big brush. You can see it's quite blurred, but it's an interesting way to work because it takes the fear away. You can just pretend that your brush is laying down the petals, or it feels like that. So now I'm I'm looking inside the rose and I'm looking for the dark areas. So I haven't drawn this one first. And there's some way to go yet, as you can see. You can see, actually, I'm thinking quite a lot. A lot of the time, you just need to look. And it doesn't always work. This isn't looking brilliant. But I'll carry on. The leaves are really scruffy, aren't they? Quite often roses have a whirl that sort of comes out from the centre. I mean, they're really interesting to look at in different stages as, as time goes by and they open up a bit in the warmth of your house and the petals on the outside tend to start dropping backwards. But there really are so many different ways of approaching them. I think the big thing is still looking for the dark bits and the light bits. And if you're using watercolour and you feel you've gone a bit too far and you've lost your highlights, well, you could always use a bit of white gouache or white watercolour on top. It's more important that you understand where the dark is, where the light is. You might want to use a lamp and light the rose from one side so you can control the light. 